Hello again, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to do another bit of a mishmash video today. I wanted to check back in on the pond though, so if you remember a few weeks back I made a pond, a little mini pond video about a miracle cure for algae and how it was a load of bunkum. But, I've kept that treatment going and I don't know whether I'm changing my mind or not. But anyway, have a look. You see this kind of filaminous, filamentous, filamentous stuff here. It's kind of bubbly. And it's starting to break down that there's duckweed and all kinds of stuff and that leaf in there. But some of the algae is in fact, it looks like it is starting to break down. So I don't know if there might be something happening after all. It's kind of what I would expect to see if there was or the way it's meant to work. I don't know if you can see that, but the way it's meant to work is that it breaks down the cell structure basically. And that is kind of what it looks like. It's definitely changing form and it's not attaching itself anymore. So I've been able to just grab big clumps of this and take it out. So who knows? That might actually be working. Anyway, we shall move on into the fish room. So here we have the subject of today's video, really. This is abject failure this is what it looks like so you'll remember me talking about the breeding project that i've got with these two fish here and i really just have to admit defeat now because it's just it's not happening it's not getting anywhere near happening i think i've tried just about everything but yeah it's going nowhere so there's a bit of backstory these two they would lay pretty much every fortnight uh, every two weeks in the main display tank but obviously it was a display tank so it was just wasn't going anywhere um, the eggs would get eaten either by themselves or by something else so I thought I'll bring them down here and give them a chance um, now I've given them every chance they have been down here a few months now and it's really not unusual for discus to be very picky about when they're going to lay eggs and start breeding and it's the stars need to align sometimes but for two fish that were so regularly laying eggs in the display tank they laid three or four times down here but it never came to anything and then they just kind of those three or four times were just starting to drop off so well they laid once uh, two weeks later they laid again and then it was three weeks later and they laid again and then it was four weeks later and they laid again so the space between them laying was starting to increase and they haven't laid now for a couple of months and yeah like I say I've tried everything I, I just think they just don't like this tank and that's perfectly normal um, and if anybody is getting into discus breeding, I've done this before a few times and they will, they'll go on strike for months at a time sometimes and you do need to get the conditions right but I've been trying to vary their food, I've been trying to change their uh, water change routine, the lighting setup um, even this line here, I've been doing some cold water changes sometimes that gets them into the mood increasing the temperature and the humidity in the room um, but yeah, it's just not happening so I'm kind of calling it a day now. Sometimes um, the issue can be maybe there's too much traffic in here. So this is my fish room. I am in and out here all the time. But they were laying in the living room, which also has people in and out all the time. Um, but the washing machine and the tumble dryers in here, maybe they didn't like that noise or the vibrations. Maybe they don't like the height of the tank. I've had fish before where they will quite happily lay on the first shelf of my racking system, but in the tank on the second shelf, having none of it. Um, that's the only thing I haven't tried because I don't have a tank bear set up on a higher level. Um, but I'm not really that concerned about it because these aren't an ideal pair um, for breeding purposes anyway. As you may remember from my previous videos, I probably get a lot of brown fish from this combination. So when I say I probably get a lot of brown fish from this combination, what I mean is that the genetics of this are such that because these are two different strains, if I got them to pair up, that doesn't mean I'd probably get 50-50 of each. I'd probably get a muddle or a mix, and the majority of them being brown fish and maybe one or two of each strain, if that. Um, genetics of discus is quite interesting, but that's possibly a video for another day. Um, so it, it, maybe it's a blessing in disguise that we haven't got them to breed down here. I just wanted to do it as a little project. Um, but some of the things I was trying, like I say, was doing the, the large cold water changes. So 
that's quite a popular thing and the idea here is that you're simulating the wild environment so when they're in a river and there's the rains come that drops the temperature by a degree or two and kind of triggers their spawning behavior so i'll take the the water level from here maybe down 25 30 percent something like that and just fill it up with straight cold water um, i've had that work in the past for fish but these two not having it I've tried everything in their diet, from beef heart, to live foods, to frozen foods, to dry foods. They'll eat them all quite happily, but yeah, I think they might have just fallen out. So we're probably going to give up on these ones. I'll move them back up into the display tank and they can live out there in the, a nicer tank. A lot more space to move around in. Maybe we'll try and get another pair, um, a more natural pairing, or even buy a pair that have proven so as we can at least document it and you can see what's going on. So I'm not saying that this is the end of the breeding project but it's probably the end of the line for these two. Um, so yeah, complete failure. <laughs> it is what it is I suppose. Quick run through of the rest of the tank. There's, um, we've got here, still got snail farm going on here with my a couple of bettas. Um, they're doing really well. This is the one that you remember used to be red that's turned blue. Still really spectacular looking. Um, I've just got snails in all the other tanks. There's another one here hanging out up there. I've been doing some moving around up here, so we've got nothing really in this tank at the moment. I've got the pea puffers in there, and they're being quite reclusive. I think you can see one just above the filter there, they like to hang about down there. Nothing really in there at the moment, other than some bristle nose fry. And here, just just a few guppies. I've been trying to get all the guppies, all the strains together. So I don't know if they've got proper names or anything, but these are the yellow ones are in here. It's maybe about six or seven of them in there somewhere. Over here, we've got some rams some German blue rams and these are quite cool looking actually these are fairly new I did have the golden rams but we got rid of them and moved them on because they weren't doing anything so this is another just pair of German blue rams that I've picked up and um, fairly young fairly new and um, so we'll just give them a little bit of a chance to settle in first but look at the colors of these guys the, the LED lights really pick up and make them look good. Really one of my favourite fish, these. Uh, next door here we've got Penelope, who my plan was to put her out in that little mini pond. So this is the fish that my daughter rescued, rescued, I say, brought home from Pets at Home one day. I can't decide if she's ill or not. Every now and again I catch a glimpse of her and think, oh, has that fish got dropsy? And then another day I'll go, no, it's fine. But yeah, I don't know what's going on here. I've just started cleaning this tank and made it all cloudy and disgusting looking, but this is another bristlenose breeding tank. Um, there's some cherry shrimp in there as well. But the water's gone all disgusting, but you know, you get to see the good with the bad in there. I've just chucked this extra filter in there at the moment to help clear it up a little bit. Yeah, it's not very pretty at the moment. And down here we've got the other bristle nose and cherry shrimp tank. Um, loads of babies in here. Let's see if we can find you some. They're mostly hiding, obviously. Yeah, but there are quite a few in here. And I think in this cave and in this one, we've got two of the bigger males sitting on eggs at the moment. Not that we can see much of it. What a weird position to be in. But yeah, lots of bristlenose juveniles, babies, sub-adults, all, all different kinds of sizes. Um, it's one of my more successful breeding projects. And then over here, we've got the known Altum, Altum Angels. These are the fish that were from Predator Aquatics that they sent me as a kind of sponsored video a few a few videos back they were meant to be altum angels but aren't but are still 
quite spectacular. I don't know quite why they're hiding, I probably upset them, so as you can see the water level's down because I've just done a big water change. But they're usually straight out to see me, that's a bit more like it. Um, they're really good feeders actually, and quite, quite pretty. In fact, I've got some food around I can give them. So, I've got some frozen brine shrimp here. Um, but they are really good feeders as well, usually. And go to town on that. They've got about half a dozen bristlenose plex in here as well. Um, if you are following along, we have lost one of these. There was one that when it came, it looked a bit dodgy. And yeah, I predicted it wasn't going to make it, and it didn't. Um, but these are another fish that if the light catches them just right, they can look quite spectacular. Um, I'm even considering moving these guys up into the display tank upstairs as well. Because they are quite active, they really good feeders and they're very pretty. But yes, I don't know quite yet. This is the tank that I really want to keep a snake head in. I just need to find one. Um, I say that as if I'm having real problems real problems finding one, I'm not really trying very hard to find one. But ideally I'd like some, one of the smaller species that you don't need to winter. Snakeheads are a fish that some of them, some of the strains, um, they need a more um, natural cycle to, to really flourish. So over winter you need to drop the temperature of the tank and then bring it back up again through spring and summer and then back down again through autumn and winter. And um, that's how they prefer their conditions so they can spawn um, but there are some that don't need to do that and there's the smaller ones like the rainbow snake heads which I have seen in angel tanks like this it's just it's a really nice look um, and there's lots of hidey holes in this tank I mean it's not usually quite as bushy as that but it's just because I've been doing water changes in here I think this would be a, a really good tank for one of the smaller species Yeah, these guys are looking great actually, big fat bellies. So that's it for today, I just wanted to share some of the bads that goes with the good sometimes. Uh, often you'll just see videos of people that showing off all their successes, but yeah, it doesn't work all the time and you shouldn't expect it to yourself. Um, I'll, I'm going to leave them just now, but in the next few weeks they'll go back upstairs and then we need to think of a new project. I'm not sure whether I'll try and buy a pair that's kind of already paired or see if I can see anything, nothing's developing in the other discus that I've got, um, but don't know, watch this space, let me know in the comments what you would do, that's, that's, that's what all the YouTubers say isn't it, um, but anyway, thanks for joining me this time, as always, uh, click that subscribe button, we're getting up there now, I'm trying to get into double figures in the thousands, but you know, maybe not this year, but hopefully soon in the new year, um, but thanks for joining me, um, and we'll see you in the next one, bye!